A lot of people, of course, see uh, a gentleman from the hotter parts of the Commonwealth walk on the stage. Good heavens, he's not wearing a gold lame suit. Good heavens, he hasn't said y'all all evening. Uh, where is his 95-piece backing group and the Go-Go Girls? And they don't believe it until, you know, they go away not believing. He's, he's putting me on, man. And now you're looking for me here. I started standing in front of the fireplace miming to Little Richard and Fats Domino at a very early age. And then when I got slightly serious, uh, the first person I decided to be was the next Jimmy Reed. So uh, I got all the, I'd never seen him, but I got all the voice inflections. Probably if I heard it now, they'd all be the wrong voice inflections, but they all sounded right at the time. And so it was a slavish copy of Jimmy Reed. Then there was, uh, then it was Joe Williams, not Mississippi, big Joe Williams. Uh, although I'd have liked to have got his guitar playing, actually. One of my favorites, but uh, the, the Count Basie, Joe Williams. Then it went to uh, a strange mixture of uh, Mel Torme and Billie Holiday, which is a very strange mixture. Uh, during that time also, I decided to be the next Wes Montgomery, but I can't use a plectrum very much. I started using a plectrum in about the past month for, uh, just for thrashing. But I can't, uh, it's like electric guitars. Uh, with a, a le an electric guitar, there's, uh, for me anyway, it always feels as if the amplifier is between me and the guitar. And if I've got a plectrum, then I'm not, I'm not part of it. You know, if it's all fingers, then it's just you. Um, so those are the people I copied. Uh, I think I've stopped copying people. I hope so. Rocking myself to sleep in this rocking chair. The rocking chair is a very, an early Sifri type song. Um, at the time, uh, it's a fun song, I suppose. Uh, now I vaguely look upon it in a jaundice view as uh, saying very little, very loudly. Uh, uh, it's the kind of, I suppose it's as near rock or rhythm and blues or whatever it is that's fashionable to call it at the moment uh, as I used, as I get. Um, I haven't written a song like that for ages uh, and I don't think I'll write anything like that ever again. There's a lot of mathematics in writing songs. You get a word at the end of a line, and there are only so many words that uh, will fit, will scan. Uh, and you just have to hope that one of them, one of those words, will lead you on to something that means what you want to say. I'd like to write a song in which absolutely, there was no rhyme whatsoever. And, for example, just take a, con uh, a conversation, record a conversation, and then put it to music. I'm not at all poetic. Uh, Poetry is not one of my strong points at all. I always believe that poets should write poetry and lyricists should write songs. There are things you can say in a song that you would be too embarrassed to say in conversation. Uh, I mean, if you're in bed, you wouldn't say it because you spend all your time thinking, good heavens, I remember this. It was straight out of a B, mu B, a B movie, you know, kind of. Gloria, how could you do this to me? And all of that. In a song, you can say it, and it sounds correct. And also, it's a cowardly way of saying things that you would never say in conversation. A song is a way of saying things one would never say. That's why I'm writing this today. This is my love song for someone. If you're black in the States, even though they throw bricks at you and you sit at the back of the bus, you're American. But in England, you're not English, which is very weird. A hell of a, hell of a, hell of a lot of the people who are wandering around uh, on black, playing supposedly black music, shouting y'all and uh, say it like it is, etc., etc., know less about it than uh, a lot of the white people 
who come from the same area, or who really come from the area where it's really, I mean, uh, it's now a matter of if you are a town dweller, you're a town dweller. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white. And if you're born in Manchester, you're Manchester. It doesn't matter. Uh, so you don't have to be black to play black music, and you don't have to be white to play white music. I'm uh, what you'd call an unhealthy agnostic. I'm not a protest singer, and I don't f believe in instruction by songs. I think you should, if you have anything to say, you should put it in the song in such a way that the person listening hears the song and it clicks and they say, oh yeah, that's right. But the business of uh, everybody get together, learn to love one another right now, I'm sorry to quote, but the business of uh, you ought to get out there and love your neighbour, uh, I feel is an insult. I mean, uh, you know, the Bible and everything else has been saying that for several thousand years and we know it doesn't work. Well, we know it doesn't work because we don't do it. I'm not afraid of being ignorant. I am ignorant. I'm afraid of people realising that I'm ignorant. I was in a monastery school for 11 years. Not a boarding school, thank God. What do I mean, thank God? Ah, uh, not a boarding school. <laughs> I read comics. I'm a peanuts fanatic. After my monastic upbringing, I decided that religion was something best left in the public lavatories. And uh, Schultz and Peanuts provide me with a religious outlet. When I started out, I was very much on the business of I can't write a song unless I have inspiration. It's inspiration, whatever it is, gets you, and it all streams out. And then I decided that was just self-indulgence and a bit of, you know, a bit of rubbish and a good excuse for being lazy, as I'm very lazy. I now feel that if you start a song, if you're any good at all, you should be able to finish it. I find the music the easiest and the words a second. But one of the hardest things of all, for me, is subject. If I'm given a subject that I'm close to, then it, it works. A hotel Room Song is one of the few songs that uh, I wrote specifically about something. A couple of people from a TV company that shall remain nameless <laughs> arrived in uh, Birmingham and came to my hotel and we uh, talked about me all afternoon. And when I talk about me, I, it doesn't do me much good. Uh, so uh, by the time we got to the club that night, uh, I think that was one of the worst performances I've given for about four years, because I was one in, in one of my foul moods. Anyway, so uh, so I had a rotten night, and uh, the next morning the song appeared. That's all. The Beatles are to our music, you know, they're the Louis Armstrong of their day. And now and again, I like to do other people's songs, but I've never seen the point of doing another person's song as they do it, uh, which always annoys me when I hear somebody's version of somebody else's version of somebody else's version of a Beatles song or a whatever it is song. Uh, if you can't do it differently, well, maybe you can do it better, but you can add something by doing it differently as well. Uh, if you can't do one of those two things, you might as well hear the original. There's too much personality in music. Who the hell cares about who it is? It's the music that stands up. I would like the audience not to know who I was and not to see me uh, in completely all forms of music, in fact, not to know the artist, not to see the artist, not to know who wrote the song or the piece, but just to hear the music completely devoid of anything and evaluate the music on its merits. I don't believe in giving the audience what they want anyway. I believe in giving the audience my best and making them like it. Uh, you don't make hit records that way but uh, you can sleep at night.